where is God anyway? Hi, my name is Scarlett, and I'm an atheist and skeptic, and lately on the old YouTubes I've been seeing a number of videos on this argument called The Argument from Divine Hiddenness, so today I thought I would examine it. You probably know it already, but if you don't, it goes like this. Sincere seekers of a god try to find him, and he doesn't materialize. Now, when I was a Catholic child and this came up, priests and nuns and Joe Schmo teachers of whatever we were doing would tell you that God can't make appearances because he's busy running the universe. So when you pray, you should direct your words to a saint or the Virgin Mary because God is off making gravity work or creating stars in nebulae or whatever other wizarding wonder you want. Non-Catholics often think this means that Catholics worship these saints and the Virgin Mary as deities, like sneaking a bit of polytheism into your communion wafer. But really, these entities are considered intercessors who will intervene to God on your behalf. They aren't God. They're more like graduate assistants who help him out and make sure all the work is getting done. Catholics do believe in a Trinitarian God and they have crucifixes on their church with a dying Jesus on a cross, reminding you of how much he suffered. You're welcome, Catholic. Anyway, the Catholic Church is a lot like a bureaucracy, and they conceive of heaven as a big bureaucracy. And if you consider it was a complicated Roman state that birthed this church, it makes a lot of sense. Anyway, the Catholic idea is don't expect God to appear, period. End of. Like scram already, the priest has business behind the altar. Obviously, Protestants see things differently, and they profess to have a relationship with God, or Jesus, and that implies a sort of give and take, you know, at least conversation-wise. To me, the only real answer that Christians can give to the issue of divine hiddenness is this. God answers the people he wants to, and apparently, you ain't one of them. God has his besties, his pet pupils who sit in the front of class, and the others are just here to bring them to perfection. But this message clashes with the one that says God loves us all and he wants us all to be saved and blah, 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 and all that. Okay, so what do they say? Here are three things that Christians say. Number one, you weren't sincere in your quest for God, Jesus, the truth, TM. You were just an atheist doing a perfunctory prayer to prove to yourself that you were right all along. <coughs> Projection, maybe. <laughs> Number two, you didn't perform the right ritual, i.e. you didn't say the right prayer the right way in the right place at the right time, or you didn't kneel, or you weren't standing in the right place, or you needed to get communion or confess your sins first, or basically whatever the Christian talking to you thinks you should have done. Number three, some people did look for Jesus. And they found him. So nanny, nanny, boo, boo, you must be wrong about something. Go back and see answers one and two. So first off, the response that you weren't sincere is sincerely quite insulting. And while sure people can misrepresent themselves, why do you go to that first? You don't know what's in another person's mind. And I would hope that you would start first with empathetic listening to understand the person not jump to the idea that they are misrepresenting themselves. I myself have heard lots of ex-Christians tell me they prayed and went through a dark night of the soul with tears and fear and stress and distress without getting anything they could interpret as a sign. And these Christians cross denominations and even religions. Now, I did not have that experience, but I was a believer for the first I would say 20 years for sure of my life. I don't know. I became an agnostic at some point. But, you know, there were plenty of times that God could have given me a little nudge that I could interpret and understand correctly. And I never got that. Frankly, I do sometimes think that this is projection. These Christians who say you're not sincere are not sincere themselves, or they haven't sincerely questioned their position. They've just gone for confirming information. Isn't everyone doing this? They ask. But I think that this accusation serves a different purpose. If it is aimed at a non-believer, 
it derails the conversation and the focus falls off of why God remains hidden. It is now on the motives of the atheist. And perhaps the atheist gets indignant, frustrated, even angry at the accusation because come on, that's not a nice thing to do in a conversation where everybody is supposed to be trying to understand one another. So now the atheist might embody the angry atheist stereotype and the conversation continues to disintegrate while the Christian gets off the hook and the question is never answered properly. But often this particular answer is said before a believing audience. And here it can serve two functions. To cement that the believers are better people because they are sincere and they are in the right and they found God and there it just cements all of that belief right into place. If they are a doubting believer wondering why God doesn't appear to them and they're afraid even to mention this to anybody because, oh my gosh, the judgment, it might scare them to stop considering their doubts. Oh no, you don't want to be one of the evil, insincere atheists rejecting God. Stifle that belief. Shove it down. Get it out of your mind. I'm a believer again. Alleluia. Off to part two. You didn't perform the right ritual. Well, this is frustrating, but it is an easy answer. This has nothing to do with the sincerity of the person seeking. If someone sincerely is looking for God, why would God be so put off by his ignorant creation's lack of understanding of what the right way to find him is? I mean, if you were in one denomination doing all that they say you should do and you don't get an answer, this is a problem. God should step in to get all the Christians moving in the right direction. If I'm Catholic, but God really thinks Pentecostals have the right way to go about it, why isn't he stepping in? Those Catholics are just as sincere as the Pentecostals, and God should know that. They're praying to him. These are all sincere believers. It doesn't matter what your denomination is, but they're all doing different rituals and prayers and have slightly different beliefs. The one thing they have in common in terms of Christianity is the divinity of the Jesus, but the rest is up for grabs, and God is not really setting them straight. So again, we're just derailing the conversation. And frankly, the fact that there are so many denominations of Christianity, not to mention different religions in the world, is another reason why I don't think an all-powerful, all-loving God can exist. I can't tell you how many Christians have claimed other Christians are not real Christians because they don't believe this thing they think you should sprinkle and not fully immerse in the baptism, and God never steps in to correct anybody. But again, this is another way to derail the conversation, stop focusing on the real issue, and make it about something different, all the while patting themselves on the back for having been teacher's pet once again. Which brings us to number three. Some people claim that God did prove himself to their satisfaction, which, okay, maybe they are the special ones. But it's good to ask these Christians, what convinced you? Is it that you went to a service with really good music and a cool sermon and you felt the Holy Spirit? Is it that you prayed for a sign and three weeks later you found a Bible you forgot you had and you opened it to a significant passage that meant something to you? or whatever. Those are ones I've heard, by the way. I usually find these stories less than convincing. They don't entail anything tangible, like a real conversation or anything, unless it's just a voice in their head, which how do you know that that's not your own voice in your own head talking back to you? I don't know. But like in that first one, you felt the Holy Spirit at a service. It really sounds to me like your emotions were manipulated. And the more the person felt like they were lost beforehand and the more they were open to that manipulation, the more they felt like they needed direction, the more they were willing to put their hands into something beyond them or or whatever. But that's all that sounds like to me. I don't know that you can really say that that was the Holy Spirit. In that second one where you prayed and you came across an object you forgot you had, I mean, cool, I guess. What's next? Peering into entrails? Examining tea leaves? Seeing what birds fly across the sky after you pray? If it's a crow going north, danger, Will Robinson. Red sky at night, sailor's delight. We just go down aphorism after aphorism. Anyway, in my mind, number three is another attempt to derail the issue and put it back on the non-believer. You're just a sinning sinner in love with your sin and don't want to find the truth. 
end of. So to recap, I think that these answers are A, to derail the conversation, get it away from talking about God and his hiddenness and put it on you. Somehow you're hard-hearted, you're not open, you're not sincerely looking, other people found whatever the answer is, it gets it off of why is God not visible to everybody. And number two, it's a way to convince believers that they've got it right and no need to go looking for anybody else. Just keep those blinders on. So what do you think? Do you have any other thoughts on this particular question? Put it in the comments below. While you're down there, like, subscribe, and do all the YouTube stuff. You're on YouTube, you know what to do. And if you like what I do, you can buy me a coffee. The link is in the description below. This is probably my last video for a while. I'm gonna be traveling for a few weeks, but I will see you at the end of July with more content. Who knows what I'll be looking at then. So I hope everybody has a safe and fun and productive and a whatever summer you want it to be. I'll see you later.